for women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 24th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women in World Affairs. The Ukraine capital of Kyiv refuses demands to surrender Mariupol to Russia. Russia has more military firepower than Ukraine, covering the land, air, and sea. It has 900,000 active military personnel across its forces, compared with Ukraine's 196,000. On Tuesday, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said roughly 100,000 people remained in the city that once had a population of nearly half a million. Ukraine citizens not enlisted in the military have joined the fight to regain control of their country. Yes, every day people who are not trained to fight are fighting back. The longevity of this war is due to the resilience of the Ukraine people. They know what it's like to be a part of Russian rule and they do not want to go back there. So they resist. They resist the hostile takeover with every fiber of their being and we must do the same. As we watch this traumatic saga unfold, we have to remind ourselves what this world stage battle is teaching us about the battle for our own peace. Ukraine declared independence from the Soviet Union on August 2nd, 1991. Since then, it has rebuilt itself into a model society with a governing body that reflected the values they wanted to live by. How many of us have to fight battles to regain a sense of peace in our lives only to find ourselves standing face to face with the enemy we once overcame? Don't think for a second that just because I'm feisty that I don't battle with negativity and poor mental health habits. In my own fight to give my gifts to the world, I am often bombarded with negativity that tells me to give up, that no one wants my gifts and no one cares. I push through and keep working. But just like the Ukrainians who did not believe that they would have to fight an old battle that they thought they already won, the old battle comes back. But what do I do? I resist. How? I resist by standing up to those thoughts that try to convince me to give up. I resist by making sure that my actions align with what I want for my future, regardless of the thoughts that enter my mind. Ukraine has resisted for 28 days in a fight for their lives and the independence they created in 1991. If they can stand firm for 28 days, so can you. Fight to the death for your peace and the life that you want. You don't have to go back to the conditions that you gained independence from. You're not the old person you once were. You are stronger, wiser, and you have tasted the fruit of freedom. When the old life resurfaces to lure you back into what you escaped from, stand firm. Actions over everything. You stand firm. In other news, while the world is watching Ukraine, the Taliban is tightening its control over Afghanistan. The Taliban are a predominantly Pashtun Islamic fundamentalist group that returned to power in Afghanistan in August 2021 after waging a 20 year insurgency. The Taliban leadership says it has ordered Afghan courts to treat women fairly and to spread awareness of women's rights across the population. But that's what they mouth say. But they actions say otherwise. Thousands of little girls in Afghanistan report feeling sad and dejected because they are not allowed to attend school. And the majority of women have been banned from returning to their jobs since the Taliban takeover. Girls and women were banned from schools and universities during the last Taliban rule between 1996 and 2001. The Taliban have imposed a slew of restrictions on women, banning them from government jobs, policing what they wear, and preventing them from traveling outside of their cities alone. A flicker of hope was quickly diminished when the Taliban announced the reopening of the segregated schools for girls, but then closed them just hours after they opened. This is not a TV show. This is not some page in a history book. This is happening right now in real time to real women and girls. The only difference between us and them is the place we happen to be born in. How could you become the woman of your dreams if the right to education and freedom to choose was taken away from you? As frustrated as we are about the fight for our rights as women, we must understand that we have a privilege that many women across the world only dream of. We must focus on this privilege and milk it for everything it's worth and then turn around and use the game power to restructure the systems that are holding other women back. We have the baton in this race for women's rights. What will you do?
what will I do? Upgrade your life and use your strength to upgrade others. I promise. In other news, the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics indicate that there were an estimated 100,000 drug overdose deaths in the United States during the 12 month per period ending in April, 2021, an increase of 28.5% from the deaths during the same period last year. Doctors, mental health professionals, and religious leaders all work to end the destruction of our society due to drug use, with the most common path to drug and alcohol rehabilitation being the faith-based groups, Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous. But how effective can those faith-based programs be when statistics show that dissatisfaction with religion is growing rapidly among Americans? According to Pew Research study released in November 2021, nearly one third of the population, that's 29 percent, have declared that they have no religion. Among those with no religion, the, those who identify themselves as atheists, agnostics, and nothing in particular, and their percentage is now almost one for every two who identify themselves as Christian. How do we support the growing number of drug and alcohol abusers who want to experience sobriety but have no faith to support the current programs? Mary Beth O'Connor has a solution. Mary Beth began abusing drugs at the age of 12 and then struggled with a meth addiction until she was 32 years old. By incorporating ideas from multiple sources to create a recovery plan that wasn't based on faith, Mary Beth has experienced sobriety since 1994. Her sobriety led to her becoming an attorney for the federal government and then a federal administrative law judge. Now Mary Beth is a board member for Life Ring Secular Recovery and She Recovers Foundation, organizations that help people with secular be beliefs become sober. Welcome to the Fight Speed, Mary Beth. We're so glad to celebrate your efforts. Please tell us about your effort to offer an alternative path to sobriety. So when I went into uh, rehab, and this was in 1993, because I do have 28 years of sobriety, I was told that there was only one option. And that would be what many people are familiar with, which is Alcoholics Anonymous or Nar Narcotics Anonymous, which requires faith in a higher power. And that wasn't a viable path for me. I don't have that faith. And so I had to go out and try to find options that would work for me, secular options. And that's what I did. And there are a number of options that people can use. And my goal is always to advocate that people um, have an opportunity to be informed about what the choices are so they can make the choice that's right for them. And that will increase the likelihood that they will be successful in their recovery. Thanks, Mary Beth. Well, the mainstream choice for the path of sobriety is faith-based, which teaches the view that the power to overcome addiction centers around relying on a higher power for strength. How does a non-faith-based approach to recovery motivate drug and alcohol users who've never found the strength to overcome addiction within themselves? So programs that are secular or non-religious are basically focused around self-empowerment. And those include Life Ring Secular Recovery, which I'm on the board for. She Recovers Foundation is amenable to both people with a higher power or without. Women for Sobriety is a secular option focused on self-empowerment. So the belief is that you are actually capable of, of really leading your own recovery, that you are capable of making decisions about what recovery path is right for you, about what the details of that recovery are going to look like for you. And, and that doesn't mean that you have to do it alone. If you feel that group support would be beneficial, and many people do, LifeRing has meetings, She Recovers has meetings, these other programs all offer supportive meetings. But the belief is that your motive, your success is not because you rely on an external higher power, but your success is based on your own motivation and your own efforts. That's actually perfect, Mary Beth. Your programs teach self-reliance so that you can draw the strength you need from within to overcome those bad habits. If you or someone you love is struggling with drug or alcohol addiction, and you can't seem to create the belief in religious faith to become sober, please tell them about Life Ring Secular Recovery at lifering.org. Time for a break. How can you live your dreams, save money, and have adventures all at the same time? Which freedom do Black women now have for the first time in U.S. history? Answers to these questions coming up next. Don't miss it. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm on a mission to empower women in the workforce one outfit at a time. 
When I first started my career as a chemist and a chemical engineer for the government at age 20, my average coworker was a middle-aged male in a business suit. In order to look the part, I had to find the equivalent in women's workwear. That wasn't as easy as it sounded. Back then, there were only two options. The first were high-end boutiques where you could go spend multiple hundred dollars on one piece. Um, this was outside my 20-year-old budget. So what I ended up doing was going to the big box stores or the mall stores uh, where things were more affordable, but they were low quality and often left me looking and feeling frumpy. Because I don't believe any woman should ever have to deal with this struggle, I created Executive by Stephanie, a woman's workwear brand that is affordable, high quality, and made right here in the U.S. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Sometimes life can be confusing with so many restrictions and social rules to follow. That's why it's important that we find women who are disruptors and live life by their own rules so that we can see for ourselves that everything is possible. On today's edition of The Feisty Life, I want you to meet Lindsay. Lindsay is a woman who said, buck the rules and create an adventurous life that she once only dreamt was possible. Hey, Lindsay, tell us all about your feisty life. Hi, my name is Lindsay, and I live in a tiny home on wheels with my partner. We are in the process of uh, renovating it, kind of a do-it-yourself style. We bought this school bus back in March of 2021. Uh, it was kind of a culmination of both of us coming out of the corporate fashion industry world, working as art directors and feeling like there was something more out there for both of us. And one day we just started talking, we're like tiny homes, the tiny home movement, that's really cool. But we didn't like the idea of having to lug a big tiny home around in like, a, you know, a, a pickup truck. So one of us mentioned school bus, we can't remember which one. But in two weeks later, we were driving to Arizona from California and buying our um, home that we are now living in. Um, you know, I think part of what really made it uh, made the move for me was, you know, I just wasn't being fulfilled anymore in, in, in um, the role I was playing. The leadership part of it was the most rewarding, but I needed something more, you know, and I wanted to follow my dreams and my passions. And uh, this allowed us to do so, you know, now I can, you know, freelance write. I still design. Uh, so does he. He paints. He's an artist as well. So it's really freed us up to travel, which is something we both love, and to do what we love, but still, you know, make money. And um, let's see, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, the Wow Wagon is what we call our tiny home. So if you just type in Wow Wagon, it'll come up. And you can also follow along on Instagram at The Road Lens Travels. And that's about it. Congrats, Lindsay, on creating a feisty life and being an example of the success we can achieve when we dare to build the courage to lose what we have in favor of what we really want. In other news, last week, the House of Representatives passed the Crown Act, which would ban hair-related discrimination for Black Americans. The measure passed in a vote of 235 to 189 along party lines. Introduced by Bonnie Watson Coleman, the U.S. Representative for New Jersey's 12th Conditional District, the Crown Act stands for Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair. The Act prohibits discrimination based on an individual's texture or style of hair. The legislation states that routinely people of African descent are deprived of educational and employment opportunities for wearing their hair in a natural or protective hairstyle such as locks, cornrows, twists, braids, bantam knots, or afros. Well, ain't this the truth? I remember one day sitting at a table full of women where there was only one other black woman besides myself. One of the other women asked, well, why do black women always wear wigs? Why don't you wear your natural hair? Why don't we wear our natural hair in a professional setting? Um, we wanna work. 
It's always been seen as unprofessional and unkempt to wear our hair in its natural state, sometimes leading to us being denied jobs. In the same way that Asian people assimilate by taking on more traditional American names like Autumn or Summer, instead of using their given ethnic names, Black women have been conditioned to straighten our hair like Caucasian women if we want to appear to be dignified. I've worn my natural hair without straightening it for 20 years, and even this year, an older Black woman pulled me to the side to warn me that I need to get my hair done. But it's already done. I like my hair like this. But it looks like the media is catching on. Take a look at the images of Black women in ads, on TV shows, and in the media. Every day, more of them are wearing natural hairstyles that represent how amazing our hair can look when we're allowed to be creative. And now that the Crown Act is being sent to the Senate, reinforcing the idea that our hair is acceptable in its natural state, I have a feeling that Black women, with our unique names and unique hair, unique bodies and unique flavor, will finally be able to shed the insecurities that have held us back from embracing ourselves completely. Taquanda, Lucretia, Lakeisha, Kenya, Deja, Jemiah, and T. Erica. I think it's our time to shine. In other news, in a post shared to Reddit, Am I the A-Hole subreddit, a 49-year-old woman shared that her daughter Lauren passed away from sepsis at the age of 26, the same month that she was supposed to get married. The sudden death was hard on the mom, of course, and she kept the girl's wedding dress that they had shopped for and customized together as a keepsake in her daughter's memory. Since the death of her daughter, the woman said she's met a great man a few years ago and married him five months ago. The man has a daughter named Zoe, and the woman now has a stepdaughter that she feels she isn't particularly close to, but they like each other. Well, Zoe's now getting married, and she asked her new stepdaughter if she could wear Lauren's wedding dress. The woman was uneasy, and she said no to her request, but the stepdaughter persisted, asking her what the problem was, since she was now her daughter too, and even calling in her dad for reinforcement. The woman's brand new husband sided with his daughter saying allowing his daughter to wear the dress would help the two women bond. The request turned into a full scale argument with her husband and his daughter against the woman who after some thought feels that maybe she was wrong for designing the dress to the stepdaughter, but she just doesn't feel right about it. The post went viral with everyone weighing in. The comments were more than half expressing that the stepdaughter should have the dress since it's going to stay in a closet and never be used, while the minority expressing that the woman should divorce the man and get as far away from him and his daughter as possible. What do I think? I think when a woman gives a definitive answer to a request, everyone should honor it and not question her about it again. Trying to get a woman to reconsider after she has already made a decision lets her know that you do not respect or value her ability to make decisions for herself. If the stepdaughter had accepted that her answer was no instead of trying to force the issue, the woman may have reconsidered on her own. If the husband had created an alternate option instead of trying to force his new wife's hand, he would have created a bond between the two women instead of pitting them against each other. When a woman makes a decision firmly, show support for her intellect by accepting her decision. In return, she will feel safer and trust you more because you've shown trust in her ability to think for herself. And that's the truth. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. News for Women.